Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Heroes of the Storm, and today we are looking at one of probably the most hotly contested characters that was added to the game. This is Murky, who was added as of last week from Murky Week, and uh, at his best, he may be overpowered, at his worst, he may be simply annoying. He is an interesting character. So let's take a look at him, see how he works, take a look at the real quick broken animation for the Cyberwolf. <laughs> I don't know why that... It's not just Murky that that does it, too. For some reason, the Cyber Wolf is just kind of broken. All right, so let's zoom out a little bit. Take a look at his base mechanic here. This is his trait. It is an active ability, so it is on the button D. You spawn an egg. It has a 45-second cooldown. I'm going to go ahead and bring it over here. And honestly, a good strategy if you're going to be sitting in the lane is to kind of put it back here in your lane because it'll stay defensive. It'll keep you up front real fast. So I'll just go ahead and use it. Has like a two second cast time, you can see there we go. Murky puts down this little egg here. And this Murloc egg will reveal the area nearby. Uh, but the biggest part about it is that it will revive Murky if he dies within five seconds. So if you've seen like the mechanics for Diablo, uh, you'll know that when Diablo dies when he's got full souls, he'll come back he'll come back after five seconds, which makes him very lethal to get back into combat very quickly. Murky is the same, but Murky is not nearly as powerful as Diablo. Now what you may notice right away is that Murky has no mana. Murky honestly doesn't need mana because Murky's whole mechanic is to die a lot. In fact, let me show you how squishy Murky is. Let's go into the towers. He's level seven right now. And he's dead, just like that. And then five seconds later, we're back up. And you're automatically mounted. Now please notice too that when you die, the egg does not get consumed, so you can simply leave the egg where it was. So this is kind of a base laning setup where if you put the egg kind of back behind your lane, because you'll be back within five seconds and you can sit there and just infinitely harass the opponent. If you are going out and about and intentionally trying to destroy structures or to roam around the map, you may want to put the egg in a hidden location, uh, something in a, in a bush or a location that people normally don't look that does not have immediate map exposure so that any characters with global awareness, maybe like Abathur, may not be able to find it right away. Abathur is actually a very good counter to Murky because he can put down his uh, explosive mines on the map anywhere he wants, and so he could actually put it down on top of the egg and destroy the egg that way. Otherwise, you have to go and hunt for it. So that's Murky. I mean, you can see here at this level, he's only got 600 health. Not a lot. He's got, what, three, two and a half bars of the health above his head right now? It, it's pretty tiny. Thankfully, here in the lower left, you can always know if your egg is up. You just take a look at this little egg icon. The way it is right now, that means it is active. I will respawn normally. Any deaths that I incur as Murky will not go onto the scoreboard. Enemy teams do not get the experience of killing a Murky and... Murky doesn't get the deaths associated with dying until the egg is killed and Murky dies while the egg is down. So that's that's his whole shtick, his whole mechanic. Alright, let's look at his ability. So again, he has no mana, so he can pretty much go and do infinite harass. Because he dies quickly, really he has no need of mana. So his first ability is Slime. Area effect, 4 second cooldown. So you can tell he has very short cooldowns already. You release a slimy fish oil on nearby enemies. It does 38 damage and it applies Slime dealing 26 damage every second, revealing and slowing enemies by 20% for 8 seconds. So it's an AoE effect. Let's go ahead and toggle the minions. I'll go ahead and use it now. You see, there it is. Very short cooldown. I'll just do my clear cooldown so you can kind of see it. Now let me go ahead and use it on the line here, and you'll see that it actually does a good amount of damage to the creep there. It's just it's poison damage, so it's not immediate. So if I come up here... Hit it, and you'll see even on Arthas, it's doing poison damage to him, but he's recovering from it. So you just come up on him, hit him with a slime. And so it, it does do a reveal, though, and it does do a slow. For, so for 8 seconds, they cannot hide, they cannot cloak, and of course they are their movement speed is reduced. So if Murky needs to run away, he can do that. So as you can see here, just to kind of harass the lane, I can go into the lane, hit the poison, go back... Go back in, hit the line again, and you'll notice the poison stacks. I'll just go ahead and wait for another minion line here so that we can kind of confirm that. What I'll do is I'll go into the line, pop the poison, and then I'll pop it again just to make sure that the poison damage increases as it should. As long as it stacks, it means an ability that you can definitely spam against the line uh, reasonably well. So let's kind of go around the back here to the archers. 
not hit them with anything else. You can see there's their health going down. Yeah, and so it looks like it does indeed. It either stacks or it adds more damage and refreshes. That's hard to say. It, it, honestly, it's just, with just the health bars, it's very hard to really get a gauge on that mechanic. But it looks like because it has a four-second cooldown and it has an eight-second and it lasts for eight seconds, at the very least, it's looking like it actually refreshes, judging by the damage it's doing. So you can kind of see here, it's at about the not quite the halfway point. If I do it again, it doesn't go quite as far. So it looks like it doesn't actually stack. So I have to correct myself on that. You have my humblest apologies. So it looks like it refreshes, but that's still not bad because it does do an initial 38 damage, which means you are actually gaining more damage by refreshing it anyway because of the initial hit. So it is something you'll want to go ahead and, you know, really s spam it. There's no reason not to. With a uh, four-second cooldown and the fact that you actually have no mana whatsoever that you have to worry about, I see no reason why going up and attacking the enemy would be a bad thing. All right, Murky's next ability, and this is probably the one that really gives him... This is one of two abilities, actually. He's got two really interesting abilities uh, that have been the reason why people have been calling him slightly overpowered in a lot of regards. This is Pufferfish. It has a nine-second cooldown. You launch a Pufferfish at a target point, and after five seconds, the fish will blow up, and it does 191 damage. That's not too bad. Let's just kind of put it in the lane here. You can kind of see it flops out. Actually, it looks like you couldn't really see that at all, but let's show you the damage it does. There you go, 191, go hit the lane, and that does, what, 42 plus 28? That's about 70. So it does more damage. I'll go Now that the line's clear, let me just show it to you. You can see it plops out and lands on the ground. It looks like Murky actually regurgitates the pufferfish. <laughs> well, let me go and put it down. And what you'll see is the, the cast bar on the bottom in orange is when it's going to blow up. Now, the enemy team can attack the pufferfish and stop it from blowing up. The green bar on top is its health. Now, it, even though it's a health bar, it really has a set amount of times it can be attacked. As it says here, enemies can attack the fish to destroy it and prevent it from exploding. It doesn't have a set health pool, which means you really, if you're fighting a murky, you don't want to attack pufferfish with powerful abilities. You really just want to auto attack. The reason is, let's see if Arthas will attack it at all. I don't think he will. The reason is that the Pufferfish only really takes two hits. It doesn't matter what you hit them with. You hit it with two basic attacks, it goes away. Now, there is a talent that will augment it up to three hits. So if you're going for a build to destroy towers, getting that talent would probably be the best thing. Just kind of throw it in the line, and you'll see it does a decent amount of damage. Just go in here, do Q, and the puffer fish plus the poison. Actually, I think Arthas may have destroyed it through his AOE. I did not see it blow up. Let's let's take a look at that. He may have just attacked. Okay, there he attacked it. You can see he hit one hit on it, and there you go. Boom. The big thing about Pufferfish, and the reason why it is a very powerful ability, is that it is a siege weapon. It is a, it does siege damage. It does 764 damage to structures. It does almost quadruple damage to structures, and structures do not attack it. So I'll just show you here, take a look at the health of the tower. It's right here. Huge amount of damage to this tower. So I'm sitting here... Away from the tower. The tower is not attacking it. Boom. And you can see there, a lot of damage to the tower and already a lot of damage to the lane. So Murky can actually sit in a lane and do decent damage with his lane partners. The big point about the Pufferfish is twofold. One, it's going to do huge damage to structures. Now, I could use it to try and clear a line, right? And that's fine, but any enemy hero that knows what they're doing is going to attack the Pufferfish if he sees it in the line. So... That's good, though, because what are you doing? If you put out the Pufferfish, you're doing damage, certainly. And the enemy, you can see that the enemy creep ignores it. All enemy AI ignores the Pufferfish. Actually, I even think enemy, uh... No, Arthas did attack it once. Let's go ahead and clear the, uh... Minions. And let's talk about what this is really... What this really does. Why is this ability important? Why is it so contested? Because... Anytime the enemy has to go after the puffer fish, that's something they're not doing to help their team. A good murky who's on harassment 
will throw out his puffer fish at a tower any chance he gets. If the enemy ignores it, the tower takes a ton of damage. If the enemy goes after it, they've just left their line in favor of allowing your team to push up. So you're sitting here doing damage against the creep, pushing up. You've just made the enemy walk away from the line and go and deal with that fish. In the same way, if I'm here sustaining the lane and helping my allies to defeat the enemy, I can just kind of throw it out there, maybe try and time it a little bit. And the enemy can either try and hit my lane, or, as you saw there, hit the puffer. I have made him actively decide not to attack my minions because there's a puffer fish on the field. Now, the puffer fish is obviously better suited for towers, and as you can see, I've almost destroyed his towers. I've been the only source of damage towards those towers, aside from a few runs that Malfurion has done with the creep. It is a massively powerful ability when used correctly. It is a massive source of harassment. You combine this. I want you to think about this. I combine this puffer fish with the fact that Murky comes back every five seconds in order to do it again. You're looking at a character that is one of the most horrific sources of harassment to deal with in the game. Honestly, fighting some really good Murkies, I was seriously on the par... I, I, my thoughts have been that Murky is maybe overpowered. Good Murkies are very difficult to deal with. Because of this ability. Alright, before we get into that discussion, oh, because I do want to talk about that. Let's go, in, go ahead and talk about the last ability that Murky has. That's the E. This is Safety Bubble. Has a 14 second cooldown, so it is a much higher cooldown than the other abilities he has, and in a very re good reason. This is your escape move. Safety Bubble allows Murky to become unstoppable and invulnerable for 2 seconds. While active, Murky cannot attack or use abilities. If you've ever played Smite, maybe you've played the character chung Uh. She has a very, very similar mechanic to this. With this bubble, I'll activate it. It's a very interesting move. It is an invulnerability move. It allows me to, like, say I'm getting hit by an enemy. It's like, oh no, I'm getting hit. I need to avoid getting hit. I'm in the tower. I'm getting hit by the tower. Then I need to go ahead and fly, and you can see that I no longer take damage. Actually, what you may notice, and the interesting thing about the bubble, is it causes AIs to ignore you. Enemy lines and towers will completely ignore you. Not only that, but it breaks targeting for hero players. Or at least it seems to. I've had enemies chasing me with their, uh, basically the attack move option, where you basically attack anything that's nearby so that they can keep attacking me. By using the bubble, it breaks their auto attack. So in order to keep attacking me, they have to use the attack move command again. So the bubble is more powerful than just allowing you to avoid damage. You can actually cause an enemy to lose lock on you for a brief moment, which if they were relying on that to move, they may stop moving. Watch Arthas as I use it. Notice how he just runs past me. As an AI, he completely ignores my presence on the battlefield. That is one thing I think they probably need to look at, because as a player, if you're not up on it, and you may not know that that mechanic is happening, if you're following Murky, expecting your auto attack to work, especially if you're ranged, you're going to lose that lock. As a Murky player, that makes it very valuable to use in the right situations at the right times. Keep in mind, it has a very long cooldown, 14 seconds. Alright, let's go ahead and look at his ultimates. Alright, so going into the ultimate panel, we have... First, we need to get this. I'll go ahead and get Block. I didn't want to have Block on earlier because it puts an aura around you. I wanted you guys to be able to see Murky for what he was. All right, so we have March of the Murlocs. We'll start with that. March of the Murlocs. This is probably the most powerful ultimate he has and the one I would probably suggest with almost any build. It is an 80-second cooldown. Murky commands a Legion of Murlocs to charge in a target direction. Each one leaping onto the first enemy hero or structure they find. Each Murloc deals 135 damage, and they slow the target by 15% for five seconds. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and show this off to you. I'm just gonna run past the lane so I can show it off here. You can see Murky kind of pulls out a flute and then there are all the little Murlocs running towards their target. You can see they're leaping on the Arthas doing damage and you can see the poison damage on top of him. I mean just look at that. Combine that with my Q 
ability, and he was just taking a bunch of poison damage. Murky, normally, is not really that big of a threat because he has to get on top of you to do damage. Or has a pufferfish that you can easily walk out of. I mean, there is no way that pufferfish is going to hit an aware opponent. But this ability does so much damage, and I'd like you to show you exactly how much damage it does to a structure. Just look at that. That is damage unanswered. Poison damage to a structure with my ultimate. And this is why Murky is very devastating to enemy buildings. You want to build Murky to take out enemy towers? Just go around the map, popping your ultimate whenever it becomes available. And then you've got a whole bunch of damage to a tower. Now that was a keep. That would have killed one of these healing fountains or a tower. Well, maybe not kill the tower, but it would have done a bunch of damage to the tower. And keep in mind, what you saw was the damage I was doing with the ultimate without me adding into it. So let's kind of refresh the cooldown. I kind of want to show this off. And let's show you what I can do with that and the puffer fish. And I'm going to go ahead and come in, do a little bit of damage of my own. Let's go ahead and avoid taking damage for just a brief moment. And just look at how much damage that tower has taken. So, let's just grab a few random talents here. March of the Murlocs, very, very powerful. And as you can see, it's it, it spreads its damage out, but each single one does 135. And at this level, my highest damage ability is 217 on the puffer. And that's just one of them. And they latch on and they slow. So if you get March of the Murlocs, I'll actually do this one more time to show this against Arthas. If I get March of the Murlocs there in the middle of the line on Arthas, and he tries to avoid it, he's going to have a hard time moving out of it. Like, where he moved forward, which was smart, actually, because now all the uh, Murlocs went past him. If he were to try to move out of the center of it, he would have been slowed and possibly hit by more of those Murlocs. But unfortunately, it is rather unpredictable, as you've seen. The Murlocs could go on either side of the lane, but it is still very powerful. Okay, let's grab the next ultimate. I'm just going to put that. Octograb! Octograb. Summon an octopus to stun the target enemy for three seconds while you poke at them for one damage a second. So it's not a big deal. Why is this why is this a ultimate you would choose? Well, because I can put Arthas on lockdown for 3 seconds. The cooldown's fairly small too, 45 seconds. I mean, we're talking about a 3 second stun on a 40 second 45 second timer. So here there's Malfurion doing damage because I locked him in. I could have used that when he was in the tower to lock him down for 3 seconds while the tower did damage to him. Now let's just kind of, uh, I can't target minions, it has to be an ally. Alright, you can see he's got a fairly decent range, and it is an ability that Murky will dash into. So we'll go ahead, I'll do it here, and you'll see, boom, dash, holds him. The fact that he slaps him with a fish for one damage, I think, is really just a slap in the face. And really just kind of funny. So, want to keep him from getting away? There you go. Now, this ability can do more. You can get Andy Shark 2 to increase the damage. You notice it says by 20,000%. I think by then it does 200 damage a hit. So you're looking at 3 seconds, 3 to, uh, three, da three sources of damage, so about 600 damage I think. So if you get Andy Shark 2, this ultimate is more than just a stun. It actually does a fairly decent amount of damage. So it's not bad when it's talented, but the downside is when it's not talented, it's really kind of a hard sell. Yes, it's a three second stun, but keep in mind that you are Murky, and Murky is fairly weak and easy to kill, and the enemy can simply kill you out of the ability. And it, it's going to be very situational for this kind of ability for Octograb. All right, let's get out of here since you've seen all the abilities, and we'll look at his talents. All right, Murky's talent. Starting at level one, he has Demolitionist. This is the basic attack against enemy structures destroys two ammo, two ammo talents. You'll also notice that it also does an additional 10% damage. Murky, I don't believe he does too much less auto attack damage to another hero. But being squishy, it's very difficult to want to get in close just because of how squishy you are. 
But honestly, Demolitionist is nice, but considering that you're usually staying at long range with the Pufferfish to do damage to the towers, it may not be one I would ultimately choose with him. If it affected his ab abilities, maybe. You could go into Toxic Ooze. That's the slime debuff. Duration increased by 2 seconds. So normally it's 8 seconds. That makes it 10. That can be very useful if you're chasing enemies or you want to put slime on an enemy that's trying to run away. Granted, you can use slime more often than that. I mean, so there's a the thing. If you don't think that the enemy is going to be running away from you that often, then Toxic Ooze may not be the best. Because as we've seen, Toxic Ooze or slime doesn't stack. But we're only talking about the debuff duration, which is, well, I believe that's the poison as well. So we're looking at the poison and the slow. That can be useful if the enemy manages to get the way after you slime them. But it's not as useful if you're able to stay on the enemy and just keep hitting them. Alternatively, and this is probably the better option if you're going to go for augmenting slime, is bigger slime. Very creative. Well, he is a murloc after all. Bigger slime increases the radius by 30%. Well, slime's area by 30%, so exactly how that's calculated, that's hard to say. But that is a much better uh, version, a much bigger version of slime. So you can actually get it out there a bit further. It allows you to pretty much hit an entire creep line, and it can be quite useful. So if you're looking at sustaining, th something like that, it might not be a bad thing to get. Alternatively, you can also get bribe. If, you're not, if you don't like slime and you don't like getting in the front of the towers, that's probably your best bet. That's the one where you can kill enemy minions to get a stack. You use 20 stacks to bribe mercenaries. Since Murky is excellent at taking out merc uh, mercenary camps and taking out towers, he can combine that with bribe in order to make sure that he does quick work of mercenary camps rather than having to worry about using his abilities. At rank 4, Murky gets minion killer. So once again, you can see that Murky has two things he does well. That is towers, minions. Murky is a specialist in this game, and so specialists seem to really be focused on very certain aspects of their gameplay. And in this case, as we've seen, he's really not a about killing players. He's about killing everything else. So Minion Killer, 25% damage against minions and mercenaries. Out with a Bang is one of my personal favorites, because on death you can cast a Pufferfish at your current location. If you're really trying to harass towers, this is a very useful ability, as you can throw out a Pufferfish, run in and intentionally die knowing that your egg is up, and put down another Pufferfish. You know the enemy is going to try and kill one, it takes them two hits to do so. If you time it right, you can have them try to kill one Pufferfish while the other Pufferfish blows up in their face anyway. Next, you have Envenom. It poisons an enemy hero, and it does 180 over 6. Now, Envenom is an ability I've probably looked at and underestimated. It does an actual large amount of damage. The only downside to it is that it's over time. So it's a really useful ability for kind of hitting an enemy hero. So if you're trying to uh, do some damage with the poisons and slows, Envenom might not be too bad. might not be too bad of a choice. Now, <clears throat> Murky can actually promote his lane. So this is a 1-minute cooldown. It gives a target ally lane minion 200% permanent health and 100% permanent damage. And it does have two charges, so every minute you get a charge. If you don't use it for two minutes, you can then use it twice. And that's pretty useful because then you can promote two minions and just have them charge the line. And if you do your job of harassing the enemy by throwing puffer fish, then those promoted minions can start pushing a lane a little bit faster, allowing you to distract the enemy while that's happening. In fact, it may be a good idea to have it in order to distract an enemy further. They might see those promoted minions and say, oh wait, I need to take those out, and then have to make a decision between your pufferfish or the promoted minions. At rank 7, you have block. Periodically reduced damage received from basic attacks. That, you know, for Murky, for what he does, the fact that he's designed to die... Honestly, seems like a talent that I would not use on Murky. But... It can save you from getting killed if you need to get to a position really fast and to throw a puffer fish or maybe use a slime. So I'm on the fence on that one and whether it's usefulness. You'd have to decide on your build or what, how your game is going, whether you would use block. Assault Egg is pretty nice. You reduce the cooldown of the egg by 25 seconds and the egg health is doubled. Or, sorry, it's increased by 200%, so that should be tripled. So if you are out and you're fighting an enemy team that's really good, and they've fa been finding your egg, and you just want to be able to put it down quickly, that's a pretty good one to have. Not only that, but it takes them longer to kill it. So what if you die and they find your egg while you're dead? Well, then you might get a chance to respawn and get away before the egg dies. So there are there's some really nice usefulness to that. On this tier, you could actually augment two of your abilities, so you have to choose between Slimy End or Wrath of Cod. Slimy End allows you to automatically cast Slime upon death. 
And considering that at rank 4 you got out with a bang to cast a Pufferfish, that means you will both cast a Pufferfish and a Slime. So if you're maybe pushing a line and you're intentionally dying in the line, I mean, that means you've just done extra damage to the line doing that, or maybe even to a tower. That can be pretty nice. It can double up a little bit of the damage. Uh, the slime is not going to be enough to slow them to get out, to keep them where the pufferfish is, but it should be enough to do some damage to an area that you need to do. Or again, once again, distract the enemy. Slimy in, not one of my favorites, but is definitely an interesting idea that it once again plays hand in hand with the fact that Murky is supposed to die. Wrath of Cod is a very useful one. Pufferfish increased structure damage will now apply to all enemies. I have caught people unawares by this. Throw out a pufferfish into a, a group of enemies that didn't really think about it and stood in it and ended up dying. Because you've got to remember that it's doing quadruple damage. That damage that you're doing to a tower you'll now do to players. So, honestly, this is not something you're probably going to expect to hit with players. What this is really good at is killing the line, killing minions, killing mercenary camps. Combine Wrath of Cod with your mercenary killer at rank 4, or minion killer, and you will probably find yourself destroying minion creeps super fast, especially if you combine it with the ability to cast more than one puffer fish at a time. It's very useful. Alright, Clairvoyance is a standard talent that many players can get. This is a reveal a target area, and enemies in the area are revealed for a short duration. So, that, that, that one has always been a hard sell for me. Uh, there's no wards in this game, so having map vision can be important. Um, but it is, like, only temporary. It can be useful for certain events, like on Blackheart's Bay, if you want to know if the enemy's turning in or not. But it's usually only useful if you're in a group with communication, I'm going to be honest. Uh, it's not something I would really suggest to anyone that's going out and playing on their own. If you have voice communications and you need to know of someone somewhere, uh, I would probably pick up Clairvoyance. It might not be too bad. Uh, although, compared to, say, Wrath of Cod or Assault Egg, you know, these, honestly, that's a very hard sell compared to the others. Moving on to 13, you can get Spell Shield. So Murky does have two tanking talents. He has Block and he has Spell Shield, which can keep him alive. So you can try not to rely on death mechanics. Doesn't seem like the kind of hero to do that with, though. Alright, just to go over it uh, for completeness, this will comp uh, periodically reduce damage received from hero abilities by 50%, and it stores two charges. Tougher Fish is very useful. This is Puffer Fish can sustain one additional attack before being disarmed. I talked about that previously. So now you can take three hits on the fish rather than two, which means especially if you're throwing out more than one fish or you're maybe combining it without with a bang, the enemy has to do six hits to stop one of those things from blowing up. It can be very useful. Alternatively, if you're looking for the defensive side, Bubble Breeze allows you to move 30% faster when you cast the bubble. So you go into the bubble, you're invulnerable for about two seconds, you're moving faster, so it's a great escape mechanic. Well, it's also a great attack mechanic, considering that you're going in to do damage and maybe sometimes you just want to get past enemies. You can use that bubble. Now keep in mind, as I mentioned, AIs ignore you when you're in the bubble. So if you're running past the lane, now you may notice if you run past the lane you don't have creep, the lane will turn around and they'll start trying to attack you, and they will chase you. And they will usually follow for a decent amount of distance, and sometimes get you trapped in a corner. You can then use your bubble to get make them ignore you, and they'll start marching back to their positions. Using something like Bubble Breeze means you can do that a lot sooner without uh, taking too much damage. Alternatively, Bubble Machine is very nice. It decreases the cooldown by 5 seconds, meaning you can use it far more often. Lastly, there's Hidden Assault. This can be very useful to those murkies who like to die very frequently. And will help you hide your egg. Hidden Assault, after respawning out of an egg, murky is cloaked for 10 seconds and increases his, the sight range of the egg by 150%. So the the also increases sight range of the egg, that's regardless of being dead. So you put the egg down, it's got additional sight. If you are good at looking at the map, that can be useful because then you can see when an enemy is about to go for your egg and you can try and avoid it or make sure you put an egg down ahead of time. So that's really great if you're keeping vision on your egg. And then of course the cloaked for 10 seconds after you respawn is very nice because uh, even though the cloak is very easy to see, like an enemy that's paying attention, you'll never surprise with a cloak. It, it's not... A perfect cloak it is you know as long as you've seen it 
or you know, if, you, if you've seen it, maybe in these videos or you know played, you know the cloak is very easy to, to, to pick people out of. But the thing about the cloaks in this game is they're really not there to make it so that you're invisible. They're there because if an enemy is paying attention to something else, it makes you harder to see. So the enemy might be focusing somewhere else, rather than seeing a character out of the corner of their eye, which will instantly trigger that response in their peripheral vision, you're actually hidden and you're a shimmer. And most players don't really kind of pick that up in their peripheral vision if they're looking at something else at the time. So being cloaked can be very useful, and they don't notice it right away. They may not know where you came from if they see the shimmer to know where your egg is, which help keeps the egg hidden. Going on to rank 16, Master of Slime. Slime's debuff duration is increased by 3 seconds. Wow, that's two of those, isn't it? Let's let's take a look here. This one, uh, Slime's debuff duration by 2. Slime's debuff duration by 3. So you can increase Slime's duration to a total of 5 seconds. Huh. You know, I, I don't really care for either one of them, so I'm not sure if you would ever double those up. And if you ignore one, you can always get the other. So there it is. You can get one or the other. Uh, Pufferfish School. Pufferfish can hold two charges, allowing it to be cast in rapid succession. Once again, great for taking out towers. If you fire them out quickly enough, the enemy pretty much has to, again, be very quick about destroying those Pufferfish, and you're doing your job. You are distracting the enemy, or you're doing damage to the towers, one or the other. Those are both primarily Murky's job. Beneath Contempt, after using Safety Bubble, Murky will not be attacked by minions or towers for 5 seconds. So the AI ignoring mechanic appears to be very much deliberate, because now you can extend it for 5 more seconds. You use the bubble and then you've got 5 more seconds where you will not be targeted by minions or towers. So you can use this to kind of sneak around or get into a position where you need to be in order to do more damage. Lastly, for this rank is Blood for Blood. You can activate to steal 15% of target enemies' max health and slow its movement speed by 30%. So that, along with the Envenom with rank 4, that means you can actually do a decent amount of damage to an enemy hero. So you might be out there harassing the lane, and you might not be able to kill an enemy with just your damage alone. But maybe, just maybe, you decide to help your allies, even though you can't really do too much against the hero with your normal abilities, to pick those two up in order to strengthen the weaknesses of Murky, which is basically fighting players. That can be quite useful, especially since Murky finds himself having difficulty in team fights. As a matter of fact, he's not a character I typically put into a team fight. I will typically try my best to ignore the enemy team while doing damage to their towers. It really changes up the game for players of and against Murky. All right, looking at his final abilities here at 20, he gets Bolts of the Storm to travel to a nearby lo to uh, any teleport nearby location. He also gets Swift Storm. You are no longer dismounted from taking damage, and you increase mount speed to 60% of movement speed. That can be quite useful if you need to get somewhere quickly. The downside is both of his his ultimate augments are really nice. Never ending Murlocs. The Murlocs travel farther and cling to targets for two seconds longer, meaning they're do addi they're doing additional damage, and the slow is lasting longer. And that counts for both buildings and players. And a Shark 2 augments your Octo Grab and increases the damage. As you can see here, this has 10,000%. That'll go up as you level up. Uh, and I think it does 300 to 400 damage per hit. So if you're looking for something to do a lot of damage to a player, there you go. Maybe hit them with the Invenom, hit them with the Life Steal, and then hit them with the uh, Octo Grab. And then boom, you've just done a whole bunch of damage to a player. That's a possibility. And players probably won't see it coming. Quite honestly, a lot of people that have seen Murloc are typically having to worry about their Pufferfish. So if I do an alternate build, I might actually try to make him a player harassment build. We'll have to see. There are many different ways that you can go about this. Well, that's Murky, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to take him out into a match. And uh, let's just kind of show you what kind of havoc he is capable of wrecking. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dragonshire. I think on this game, I'm going to try and give you guys a look at the kind of build I typically have been using lately that I've been enjoying. It's pretty much a heavy harassment build. I need to find a good place to hide. Now, there are these little hedge mazes like this that are great places to put the eggs because a lot of people don't go through those and they don't have vision. They contain fog of war that unless you actually go into them, you can't see into them. I can use those or I can do over here. Or the same over here. Now the downside is there is typically oh dear maybe I have to change my plans. 
Um, they are putting me in the middle. I don't know what's going on. All right, change of plans then. We're not going to do that. I'm going to put the egg down. First and foremost, got to put the egg down. We are going to do minion harassment then. Let's get bribe. I am going to very specifically try and do my best to kill as much minions as I can. I'm not sure I'm the best character for this. Actually, you know what? This might not be a bad idea. Why, you might ask? Why, why would you pick Murky for mid of Dragonshire? Well, because Murky doesn't stay dead. And if the enemy's trying to get the... Um, the dragon statue, I can die with anticipation. Yeah, stay stay in the pufferfish. Alright. Okay, doing damage. Illidan I don't even know. I'm not even gonna use the uh, the pool. I have no reason to use the pool. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start harassing the towers. Let's throw the pufferfish. Do a little damage to the line. Let's let the Barbarian kill me. And you can see I already did a bunch of damage to the tower. So now I come back. Let's put a Pufferfish down so if Illidan doesn't pay attention... Oh, you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> All right, this is one of the downsides to being murky. I'm not going to be able to do too much here. But I'm going to come out and I'm going to... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little more damage to that tower. There we go. A little damage to Illidan. What should I get? Uh, out with a bang? No, minion killer. More damage to minions. So I am... That's what I'm going for. I'm going for push... Alright. Okay, she takes damage from the towers, which is good. There are no minion camps to get. I am at 20 stacks. But I can wait. Okay, we've got Demon Hunter. Oh no, I'm invulnerable! <laughs> it's so annoying. Oh my goodness, look at this. And I'm just going to come back. I'm going to throw this fish into the line to make them do take damage. Oh my goodness. And we're back up again. Hello, Demon Hunter. Take a little poison damage, will you? Alright, damage to the line with the puffer fish. Demon Hunter not paying attention, so the puffer fish is going to do a bunch of damage to the minions. There you go, once again. Let's put the puffer fish a little bit closer because the demon hunter will probably push the lane back. Yep, there we go. Alright, so what am I going to get? Uh, let's see. Structure damage applies to all enemies now? I think that would be pretty good. That will allow me to push this down on the lane there, and you'll just see just how much damage this is going to do. All right, Mike. There we go. Very slowly but surely killing creep. Demon Hunter really is not doing too much to stop me. I mean, she is occasionally keeping me from doing too much, but that's all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best to take out one of these camps. I'm going to use my... Um, Yeah, I use my bribe for one of them, and as you can see, my puffer fish is pretty much going to do the rest. So there we go. I use bribe, and now they are pushing to the south. The shrines are gathering power. The dragon knight. Alright, let's do a bunch of damage here. I mean, just look at that. Look how quickly that line just drops. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep pushing on this tower here. This isn't normally how I play Murky, but it works. I mean, you can see that I can fire this out from beyond that tower's vision. It can't do anything about it. I'm going to go ahead and get March of the Murlocs. 
The dragon awaits heroes. Free him and destroy your enemy. Push the pufferfish forward. If I had Demolitionist, I could destroy its ammo, but I'm not too concerned about that. Let's go ahead and slow down this Barbarian. You know what? Let's see if I can get the Barbarian to get hit by the pufferfish. Ah, uh, nope. She got out of it. Come on. Ah, I didn't get her with it. Puffer! Or not Puffer. <laughs> Slime! Here comes Hammer. Hammer time. Oh! Oh, with the big gun. Nice. Alright, damage to the line. And you can see I can just use this to make the enemies ignore me. So let's go ahead and do a bunch of damage, shall we? Let's just do this. And I'll go ahead and stay back. You can see there are my little murlocs grabbing onto the tower. A whole bunch of them grabbing onto the keep. Throw another pufferfish down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what I talked about. I'm going to make the enemy ignore me by running past them and then letting my creep take their attention. Now I'm free to sit behind the line, like the, my line's over here. Here I am over here throw, throwing cods at towers. That's what Murky does. Hmm. Hi. How you doing? Let's just throw this down here. Uh, I kind of want her to walk into it. Come on. Oh, well. <clears throat> Let's throw one of these down right here, so that if the enemy tries to stop me, they might get blown up. Murky has the shrine! Go away, demon hunter! Alright, let's go ahead and knock this barbarian out of here. I am Murky. I am Murloc. Alright. There you go. Let's go ahead and float on out of here. Actually, I don't even mind if I die. Let's just... Get her... Yep, there we go. Get a little bit of damage on her by taking her into the tower. Alright, next talent. Uh, let's see... I don't need to be cloaked. I could get the movement speed. One additional attack. Let's... Yeah, let's go ahead and get the one additional attack on, on the uh, Pufferfish. Just in case someone gets smart. Whee! <laughs> oh, I'm enjoying myself way too much. Oh, my goodness. All right, throw up a pufferfish, and let's do this. Let's grab another mercenary camp. I've got two stacks. I'm going to help the uh, bottom lane. There we go. There you are. Have some uh, have some minions there for yourself. Soon the shrines shall awaken, heroes. All right, let's go ahead and uh, knock these towers down, shall we? Come into my line of murlocs. Yes, come into the line of murlocs. Look at that. Look how much damage that did. I destroyed a tower. Free the dragon knight and slaughter your enemies. Come on, come on, stand in it. Yes! Look at the damage that that did to the Barbarian. Alright, uh, hold on. What are we getting? Uh, Blood for Blood. 
Slime's debuff animation increase. I don't care for that one. Um, I think I'll just get the two charges of Pufferfish early. Why not? Let's let Tassadar go ahead and grab that. I'll help against. I'll help against this. There's a puffer fish hidden here, so the barbarian's not smart. There we go. All right, so it's a good thing I have two charges. So what I can do is throw one of these at the line, and then use the second charge against the tower like so. Are they having a problem taking the Dragonite? <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Alright, I have March of the Murlocs again. Let's go ahead and throw down a Pufferfish, take out this tower. And with that, we'll go ahead and throw down my ultimate so that we can do the March of Murlocs. And you can see I can throw out two Pufferfish very quickly in succession there. You can't do them one after the other. As you've seen, there's a slight cooldown. I believe it's just less than a second. Oh, uh, well. You know, Murky is good for a couple things. One, I just, I think I just took the dragon from Lily. And that's good because Le making a opponent lose an ultimate to Murky is like a slap in the face. If I make Lily's dragon kill me... Or if I maybe... Uh, Nova uses her triple tap on me. Now the downside is Nova at level 20 does get a talent that makes triple tap reset upon a kill. So triple tap on Murky actually is not that much of a consequence. But you can jump in the middle of a triple tap that's hitting an, an, an ally. Alright, let's try and get them into the puffer fish. Yeah, stay in my puffer fish. Boom, bunch of damage to that barbarian and she's dead and look. Boom. Tower is down. I didn't even have to get my ultimate. I wasn't anticipating the game to be that quick. Um, yeah, uh, there you go. That's murky. That was a minion kill build, which ultimately didn't turn out too bad. Having not played with that kind of build before, uh, I, I know I didn't make the smartest of decisions on where I was using my Pufferfish. Really, I should have saved the Pufferfish for the minions and, of course, for the mercenaries when I decided to go and kill some. But as you saw every now and then, uh, that was a good build for the middle because I was able to get my stacks of Bribe and then I put some minions into the south lane for my allies. Nice. Overall, team performed well. Five takedowns on a murky. That's kind of funny. But as you can see, all those times I died, notice how there's absolutely no deaths. None. Whatsoever. They don't count. Ever. Alright, just to kind of take a look at the talents, uh, where did we leave out? I mean, those were all pretty good, I think, for what we were doing. Uh, for this level 16, that is what we got. Yeah, we got the two, sta the two sashes. And then finally, really, this one's... This one's tough. I think Neverending Murlocs would be the best. Anytime you get the uh, March of the Murlocs, Neverending Murlocs is just does so much damage. It, it really does. You're gonna hit even if you don't use it against an, an enemy player, you can seriously do a lot of damage to structures. So that's probably what I would have gotten at level 20 had I have gotten to that point. Okay, thank you very much for watching this build with Murky, ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you next time.